Hi, I'm Chris with Sanderson Test Prep, and in this video, we're gonna take a look at an SAT testing timeline. When should you test? So if you're planning on taking ACT, I have another video for that with the link in the description. So feel free to click there uh, and go ahead and watch that video for that timeline. But this is gonna be specific to SAT. So a very common question that I get asked from students and parents is when should we plan on taking this test? So here we see our available test dates starting in August of your junior year. So it goes August, October, November, December, March, May, June of your junior year. And then you have the fall tests of your senior year, August, October, November, December of your senior year as possible test dates. And let's talk about some advantages and disadvantages to each. So generally speaking for juniors, the most common test that juniors are going to take as their first test is the March SAT. And that's because a lot of times juniors, depending on the math class that they're taking and depending on where their English skills are, it's usually good to get a little bit more of that math curriculum under your belt and further develop those English skills and test sometime in the spring. If you're planning on testing in the fall of your junior year, you certainly can, and plenty of our students see a lot of success doing that, but just know that that's early and make sure that you are planning accordingly. So that might mean you wanna start preparing the summer before junior year, especially when you're out of school and you have a little bit more time that you could dedicate towards prep to get a jump on it if you're looking at one of those early test days. So one thing to keep in mind about a fall test date, if you are testing in the fall as a junior, let's say you're ahead in math, you're already taking pre-calculus or maybe even calculus, and you've already covered all the math that you need to, so you don't really need those extra few months of curriculum for your math class to do well in that section. Maybe you're taking an AP Lang class and you feel really confident in your English skills, so you don't feel like you need the additional classroom time to develop those further, and you're gonna go ahead and try to tackle the test in the fall. If you can arrange it around PSAT time, that is a good time to try to be peaking because if you look at it in terms of where your performance level is, it's sort of like for a professional sports team trying to play really well right when you're heading into the playoffs. So even if parts of your regular season were a little rocky, if you're peaking at the right time, if you're performing at a high level at the right time when it counts, that's exactly where you wanna be. And so that's the case here in these October, November, December tests. With the PSAT in mid-October, those October, November, and December tests hover right around that PSAT date. So a lot of times it's a good way to do well on your PSAT during junior year, which is your national merit score qualifying test for that scholarship. And if you have questions on that, please feel free to comment below. And I'm happy to put up another video talking a little bit about national merit score qualifying and what that means. But basically, it gives you an opportunity for a distinction of National Merit Semifinalist, Finalist, or you can be commended with a National Merit Scholarship. And it looks great on an application. And if you can earn the scholarship money, even better. So if we can be performing at that high level that early on in the year, then that's great. But for most juniors, you're going to be testing in these spring tests. And a couple things to keep in mind. So first of all, you do have the March test that's the most popular because it tends to have the least conflict with other things that are going on academically or socially in your junior year. But the May test is something that I wanna point out and just make sure that juniors are aware of when you're planning your testing timeline nice and early, you wanna make sure you look at your classroom schedule because if you're taking any AP exams, so, or if you're in an IB program, your AP and IB testing right at the end of the year there does conflict with that May test and oftentimes makes it very hard to juggle a May SAT around those other exams that you have for your coursework. So make sure you look at your schedule. If you're not taking any AP classes or maybe you're taking like one AP exam, you can sometimes work that around a May SAT and still sneak that one in, but it is the Saturday in between those two weeks of AP testing. And if it's gonna be that Saturday, you wanna make sure that if you're taking a bunch of APs, that you're not planning on using that SAT test date because you're gonna need that time to focus on your AP exams. Uh, if you're taking the June test, so it's about three weeks after AP exams finish. It's that first Saturday in June. And sometimes that's a good opportunity if you have just taken a bunch of AP classes. So you notice that in that time of year, after AP exams are over till the official end of the school year, there's really not much going on in the classroom. You tend to have a pretty light workload. And so sometimes that is a good opportunity to focus on test prep. But keep in mind, if you are planning on taking any subject tests, and a lot of schools don't require subject tests. Some schools will allow you an option to submit subject tests if you would like. But if you're planning on taking subject tests, June is the ideal test date 
to take those subject tests because it's right after you have finished that corresponding coursework. So if you took physics as a junior, then at the end of the year on, in that June test date, you might want to take a physics subject test. If you just finished taking US history, that's the perfect time to take a US history subject test. So the June date does conflict with subject tests because it's one or the other. So they're both that first Saturday in June, and you'd have to either decide, am I going to take my SAT or am I going to take subject tests on that test date? And then Heading into senior year, I like to say that senior year testing should really be reserved if possible for one more test with a specific goal in mind once the picture has become a little bit more clear. And what I mean by that is you don't want to plan on starting your testing in senior year. That's a little bit too late in the process and oftentimes that increases the pressure that a test taker feels knowing that you only have that one or maybe you know those two opportunities senior year. It makes those test dates have that heightened sense of pressure around them. So in a perfect world, you want to complete your testing junior year, but sometimes what you'll find heading into senior year is that maybe your college counselor will tell you, hey, you know what, for these couple of schools that are on our list, we really need to go and earn an extra 20 points in the math section for those schools to be realistic possibilities. Or you might find out about a scholarship opportunity and you might say, so for example, we're based out of South Florida and a lot of times students will find out heading into senior year, hey, I looked up all the information and I'm just 10 points away from qualifying for that next level of Bright Futures scholarship. Maybe it's worth it for me to sit down, crack a book open, do some prep and see if I can inch that score up a tiny bit to get that higher scholarship level. So senior year tests are great for that. Just keep in mind application deadlines. You wanna look at early decision, early action deadlines, as well as regular application deadlines. So for most schools, the early decision, early action deadline is gonna be November 1st and sometimes earlier actually it moves up a little bit seemingly every year but um, most often it's going to be november 1st which means the october sat is the last one you can take and still get scores in in time for that early decision or early action deadline at a lot of schools uh, and then the december test is the last one that you can get in before january 1st regular application deadlines now there are schools that have rolling admissions there are all kinds of extenuating circumstances for different individuals but these are a couple important factors to consider when you're you're looking at your testing timeline and the rule of thumb is just plan ahead if you plan ahead your SAT prep and testing doesn't have to be a stressful experience so if you give yourself that opportunity to start looking at your schedule during sophomore year and think ahead to when am I going to be able to test as a junior then you can incorporate not only these factors that we see listed here but other factors such as extracurriculars if there's a sport that you play that's busy during a certain part of the year if you're involved in some type of school club or extracurricular activity where you have uh, heightened workload for that or heightened hourly commitment for that at certain times of year, you can plan your testing around those commitments so that you can test at a time when you have the most free time to prepare and the best opportunity to walk into the test with a clear mind focused on that singular goal of maxing out your SAT score. For more, please remember to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.